All right, here. Yes. All right, well, <laughs> this was a lot of work to get one melody. And I want to hear it in... Uh, we want to hear it. No muting, no fair muting anything. So, here was the original. it again. The new one. I like it. Okay. Let us do a recap. Sirs and madams, wherever you are, as always, thank you for your time and attention. This is a recap of part five, composing a ballad variations in C full tonality. Today we have been working on melodic variation. And we came up with some new design things. The first new design thing that we highlighted in our diagram is the idea of a passing note. So just as a melody is several notes in succession, like da, 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 and a cadence is chords in progression. Um, it is possible to have notes between the core notes of a melody. And we use as an example this. The, those are all in the, the chords. Da, 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 da. But when you look at it, the D and the E and the D are not in the cadence. They're outside the cadence. There's the cadence at the bottom, and if I highlight this measure, you're seeing we're getting an added note. So the point is, passing notes are in the scale, but not in the cadence. And passing notes, as you can see from this red diagram, uh, give us a way to kind of smooth the space between the green diagram, the, the backbone. So the melody is the skin and it smooths over uh, the bumps and variegations of our knuckles or our cheekbones. And passing notes are part of the way we do that. So in our melodic variation, we are having to not only work with the backbone, but we're also having to have passing notes that give us some movement and smoothing between these kind of bang, bang parts of the backbone. The second thing we looked at was the whole idea of uh, lyric and what are the interconnections between the different parts of music from a physiological basis. And to do that, we played a cadence from another piece of work where we demonstrate how how words like to listen to the whispered soul as unfiltered through loosened tongues. And we talked about how that is the idea of movement and limbs over here, that there's a physical element to music. Can it dance to it or can you move to it? And there's a cognitive element to it, like are there words that go with it? And then there is the emotive element, the emotional, which is often associated with the pure sounds and the chords welling up. And then we also talked about eyes down here and visual patterns. And we tied that to the idea of arcs and motion in melody 
and uh, and we talked about the root of the word lyric, which comes from the ancient Greek instrument, a lyre, which is a stringed instrument, and people would s sit around and they would have sounds that they spoke to, which was poetry or lyrics, just like we use the word lyrics today. Words that you could sing to, sounds that you could move to, beats. And so we see that music really is hitting all five elements of human, uh, the human senses. And that was quite a diverting side trip. And then we kind of brought ourselves back to business. So the melody in the first variation sounds like this. And in today's work, we came up with one line worth of a new melody that sounds like this. And again, we say it sounds, we would have said in the old version when we played it weird, and we could say if we wanted it to be kind, it sounds different. Listening to it often enough, It's still consistent. It's internally consistent. Whatever alien creature has this different kind of cadence or physical skeleton uh, and backbone, which is already different, you know, we're going from there to there instead of here to here. This is the backbone. Compare that to the first backbone. Whatever that alien creature is, this skin fits. Sirs and madams, thank you for your time and attention. In our next session, we'll continue this melodic variation. And as always, keep on streaming. <laughs>